In November 1965, in Mansfield, Ohio, Mary Ellen Diener was at home with her sisters and her mom. The 14-year-old was described as intelligent. At around 10 p.m., the dryer in her home broke, and they were in the middle of a wash. Mary Ellen and her younger sister Brenda then had to take the clothes to a nearby laundromat. Half past 10, Mary Ellen and Brenda arrived at a laundromat. Mary Ellen then realized that she ran out of change for the dryer. She offered to go look for change and told Brenda to stay and wait inside the laundromat. After half an hour, Mary Ellen still had not returned, so Brenda went to their grandmother's house. Just after midnight, the Mansfield police was called because a body was spotted just a few blocks from the laundromat. Mary Ellen's grandmother came out of her house and identified her body as Mary Ellen. It was clear that there was an attempt to assault her. She had been shot twice and beaten with a brick. In her hand was change as she must have gotten from somewhere. The police then canvassed the area, looking for any leads. There was one name that kept surfacing. 22-year-old Lester Eubanks. Lester was no stranger to law enforcement. He was out on bond from an attempted assault of a woman had occurred right across the street from the laundromat. He also lived nearby. The police then went to his apartment. Inside they found the same caliber weapon that was used to shoot Mary Allen. Lester was caught the very day after Mary Allen's passing. The police took him in for questioning. It did not take long for Lester to confess. He said he tried to assault Mary Allen, but she resisted and started screaming so he shot her twice. He then went back home and cleaned up. Lester then went back outside and saw that she was still alive. He then picked up a nearby brick and hit her over the head repeatedly. Lester then went to nightclubs for the rest of the evening. Despite his confession and the immense evidence against him, he pleaded not guilty. In May 1966, the case went to trial. It was an open and shut case. Lester Eubanks was sentenced to die. In 1972, however, his sentence was changed to life in prison. There was an approach made to rehabilitate some of the prisoners. When they were good, they got certain privileges. On December 7, 1973, Lester and a few other inmates were taken to a shopping center in Columbus, Ohio. The guard told them that he will come pick them up in a few hours. Unsurprisingly, when he went to pick them up, Lester Eubanks was nowhere to be seen. The search for him started immediately, but there was no sight of him. Twenty years after he disappeared, the police realized that there was no search warrant for him. So if he was pulled over or anything, it would not have helped them find him. In 1994, the Lester Eubanks case was featured on America's Most Wanted. One of the tips that came in was someone who claimed Lester was picked up by a friend and taken to Michigan. Thereafter, he went to California to stay at a relative's home. By the time detectives made it to California, he was already gone. Investigators learned that Lester went by the name Victor Young during that time and that he told his relative that he was going north. It is unclear if this meant a different part of California or maybe even Canada. His family has not been helpful at all. It is believed that he attended his father's funeral in 2012 and none of them called the police. At the time of the crime, he was 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed 175 pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes. He has a large scar on his upper right arm. His birth date is October 31st, 1943. He would now be 76. This is what he would look like right now.